you do not need a $2,000 PC for basic photo editing. Everything starts with a good monitor because, well, you want to see what your pictures actually look like. If you have a lot of money, you can go for something like the BenQ photography monitor. They have all sorts of amazing monitors. With They even have these screens to, to prevent glare and reflections. Like if you have a lot of money, you can buy this BenQ. Uh, but you really don't need to spend 600 bucks uh, for a photo editing monitor, guys. What you could do is just search for 24-inch IPS monitor, 1080p. That way you get full HD resolution. 24 inches is good for photo editing. Honestly, it's plenty. Uh, 24 inches or anywhere close to that, like 23.8 is practically the same thing. And guys, make sure you get an IPS monitor, okay? IPS, make sure it says IPS, not TN, okay? There's three types of monitors, IPS panels, VA panels, and TN panels. TN panels are not good for photo or video editing because they have washed out colors. They're better for gaming and low budget systems. But anyway, everyone's moving to IPS these days, including gamers. Uh, you don't need a super high refresh rate monitor like one of these 144 hertz. What you want is just a normal monitor. And if we're going budget, you can go with this uh, Asus monitor right here. This is a pretty good one. $110. That's it. Uh, ViewSonic, Philips, a bunch of choices. Uh, I don't think the differences are going to be that great at this price point. I would go with a you know, reputable brand like a BenQ, Dell, a Asus. You can read reviews uh, to see what people say about them. A uh, nice thing about buying from Amazon is that it's easy to return monitors uh, if it doesn't work out for you. Uh, just make sure you have all the right uh, cables that you'll need. You'll probably need an HDMI cable. Sometimes it's included, uh, sometimes it isn't. Okay, so first step of photography is to get a good monitor and you don't have to spend that much money. Okay, tip number two calibrators so if you go on the photography forums people will say yes you need one of these professional color calibrator tools basically it's this thing that attaches to your monitor and helps you calibrate the colors for extreme accuracy here's the thing guys these things are pretty expensive and i don't think you need one most monitors are calibrated just fine out of the box i've never used a calibrator but maybe i'm the amateur uh, maybe you do need a calibrator i don't know i don't think it's personally worth uh, the money but you could always borrow one so you don't really need to use it uh, that often you just need to use it once to calibrate it and then you're pretty much done uh, but okay if you want ultimate color precision you, you would go for one of these spider calibrators tip number three the way to buy a cheap photography editing computer is to buy a used dell optiplex dell optiplex is a line of dell computers that are used by businesses and then when they need to upgrade they throw them all away or sell them to another reseller for a really, really low price. Now, the thing about these Dell Optiplexes is they're perfect if you want to do basic workstation, home office kind of tasks. If you're not interested in gaming, if you don't really don't need to game or edit 4K video, a Dell Optiplex may be everything you need to actually edit your photos and you'll save so much money. And there are so many models to choose from, it's easy to get confused. What you want is one with an i5 or an i7 processor at least eight gigabytes of RAM and at least a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Now the hard drive uh, to me, it doesn't really matter because you can always upgrade that yourself very, very easily. That's what people do with these Optiplexes. They buy them super cheap and then upgrade them with really fast aftermarket components. So there are quite a lot of Dell Optiplex models to choose from. I recommend you look for the 7020. 9020 is another good one. If you wanna save some money, you could go for the 7010 or the 9010. Uh, you'll see, let's if we press buy it now on eBay, what happens? Uh, we see a button, well, I'm in Canada, so it's giving me Canadian results. Uh, but look at this. Uh, what you want is at least an i5 processor. Now I do recommend getting an i7 processor. I think it makes a huge difference. These are really fast quad core processors. Uh, this computer is actually, this computer would be better than the one I'm editing my photos on right now. And look at this, the whole thing, uh, it's $380, okay, and it's from Canada, so, you know, you're getting ripped off because everything in Canada is more expensive. Okay, you get a quad-core i7 processor, which is not even that old of a processor. You get eight, 8 gigs of RAM. As I said, you need a minimum of 8 gigabytes of RAM, and it has a 256 gigabyte SSD, a solid-state drive. 
and it has a DVD writer and Windows 10 is legitimately installed already. But there are ways to buy these for even cheaper if you go on your local classifieds. Tip number four is to hunt for local deals. Okay, we're going to go on the Canadian version of Craigslist Kijiji and I'm going to show you what I mean. Let's see what's available. So that's the advantage of living in a big city like Toronto. There are always lots of used deals available. Uh, but if you're far away from a major urban hub, again, eBay is your friend for this stuff. This is Canadian dollars. Look at this. 330 Canadian dollars. Uh, you get an i7-3770 quad-core, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 240 gigs uh, SSD. Now, Dell Optiplexes come in quite a few configurations. Like, they're the tiny ones and really skinny, and then there are the fatter, wider ones uh, that are called MT or Mini Tower. Now, I really, really prefer these Mini Tower ones, these fatter ones, because it's easier to upgrade them down the line and it's easier to work inside them. Now, if you're not going to be taking apart your computer because you're not comfortable with that kind of thing, uh, that's fine. But just to let you know, guys, there are hundreds of videos on YouTube of how to upgrade these guys with a much better hard drive and even add graphics cards to them. Optiplex 790 is a very popular model. I would say resist, guys. Do not buy the 790. As I said, buy the 7010, 9010, or the 7020, 9020. Do not go for the 3000 series. They're not that much cheaper. Now, occasionally, you'll see... Uh, actual stores selling these and this is great uh, because what happens is they'll often offer warranties and return periods now you'll have to actually pay sales tax uh, like a normal consumer but they do offer a warranty and return period now occasionally you'll see these going for very very expensive and what happens is uh, that's when people buy them upgrade them and then try to profit off of uh, their upgrades so this person right here uh, is trying to make some money gotta respect the hustle they've added a really old graphics card to it and are marketing it as a cheap and light gaming PC. Tip number five, you don't need to spend that much money on backup solutions. Now backing up your photos is very important, especially if you're doing client work. People say if you don't have at least three backups, you have none. So you can use something like Google Drive or Dropbox. Keep your most important photos on the cloud for free or if you pay a little bit of money, uh, you can get a lot of space on a monthly plan but I would also say have an offline backup now people that do a lot of photo or video editing have proper uh, backup drives in a RAID configuration okay but we don't need to get into that right now uh, this is uh, these, these kinds of configurations are kind of hardcore uh, for the hobby photographer uh, which is the kind of photographer I'm targeting in my videos what I would say is to get a four terabyte Western digital elements hard drive I would get a four terabyte or a five terabyte drive. Uh, these are great bang for the buck. Western Digital is a good brand of portable hard drives. There's also Seagate. I don't particularly have an affinity uh, for one or the other. I personally use these Western Digital drives. Tip number six, we're gonna talk about uh, CPU, RAM, and SSD. It's very important to have at least eight gigabytes of RAM these days. I think that's the bare minimum. I would say 16 gigabytes for any kind of video editing would be really helpful and 32 gigabytes of RAM if you're doing 4K video. SSDs are practically a requirement these days. Uh, everything happens like 20 times faster. The best per dollar upgrade you can do to a computer uh, is to add an SSD drive to it. I would say go for at least a 512 gigabyte SSD drive, if not a one terabyte. We're down to $100 per terabyte. Okay, this is the part of the video that will age the worst because SSD prices will eventually go down and down and down. I'm just a bit inflated right now because I think there was a bit of a bounce back uh, with the shortages due, due to the pandemic. So if you're buying a Dell Optiplex, you definitely want uh, one of these rectangular looking uh, 2.5 inch internal SSDs. Guys, Crucial is a good brand. The MX500 from Crucial. There's also the A-Data, A-Data SU800. That's another one, but it looks like the Crucial one's even cheaper. Uh, the A data. This is another kind of bang for the bang for your buck budget brand. If you want to go super elite on your SSD, you go with a Samsung Evo. Although you're really not going to notice the difference, honestly. If you're deciding between a Samsung for 90 bucks or a Crucial, you get double the space for a few more dollars. I would just go for the Crucial, to be honest. Okay, but an SSD is very important. It will speed up your boot time from like a minute to seven seconds. 
and everything will be a lot snappier. Let's say you want a better computer than the Dell Optiplex. You're not satisfied with using some old office workers i7 tower. What you want to do is build your own computer, okay? Or, you know, you could buy a pre-built computer. Nothing wrong with that. So how do you build a computer? You go to PCPartPicker.com. And what is PC Part Picker? It's a website made by computer nerds uh, where they discuss what are the best components for putting together computers for various purposes, mostly for gaming. And, I mean, there's thousands of different configurations that are on this website. But what you want to do is you go to the build guides. So these guys, no matter what, every few months they update these build guides because the computing industry uh, you know, develops at a breakneck speed, so everything changes every three months, and then everyone has regrets that they didn't wait another three months <laughs> to buy better parts. Okay, they've got all these enthusiast, glorious, magnificent, uh, various descriptors like that. What we want to do is we want to go to the entry-level gaming builds. These entry-level gaming builds would be significantly faster uh, than the Dell Optiplexes we've put together. Okay, now you could go for a budget home office build, uh, but I would say that one's not really worth the money, uh, but certainly enough for photo editing. But if you're going to take it a little more seriously, I would say go for either the entry-level AMD gaming build or a modest AMD gaming build. Okay, you know how you guys decide what camera to buy based on emotion? Well, these guys use hard, cold, scientific logic to identify the best performing components for the lowest amount of price. So just go with this. Honestly, you don't want to waste your time. Uh, learning about all the different components. I would say go for the modest AMD gaming build. They explain all your component choices. La -di -da. And these are the components uh, down here. And it's very easy uh, to buy using this part list. This is basically an affiliate link farm, uh, pcpartpicker.com, but it provides a very useful service. Okay, they find you the cheapest prices from all these stores. I'm not affiliated with these guys. I'm quite impressed by their website. Uh, but it's a very useful service for gamers, uh, but really underutilized by photography people, I think. For 750 bucks, again, you just add a monitor to this, you add a mouse and keyboard, uh, the whole thing will come out to under $1,000, and you're getting an absolutely beastly computer. Okay, it comes with a GTX 1660 uh, gaming video card. God knows how much money you have to pay to Apple to get an equivalent graphics card from them. Uh, but with this 1660 Super, you guys will have no problem editing video uh, or even playing some of the latest games that are available. Okay, and the reason I go with AMD instead of Intel is because AMD is cheaper for workstation purposes. So AMD offers better price to performance uh, from multi-core processing. I would go with an AMD Ryzen uh, 3600 processor and this will keep you going. As this computer, if you build it, will keep you going for years if you're editing photos. If you're not in the US, you can always change your location. For example, we change it to Singapore. Let's go a little wild. Okay, it looks like New Egg is in Singapore. Let's go somewhere like Deutschland. Okay, and they have various stores in Germany. Uh, occasionally, a part will not be available, uh, but you can simply edit this, customize this part list. And if it's not available, uh, you can X this out. That's a case and then you can choose another case. It will only give you cases uh, that are compatible with all the other parts you've chosen, so you can't really go wrong. You just pick a nice looking case uh, if that case isn't available. This goes for any of the parts. Okay, Fractal Focus G is a very nice bank for the buck case. Boom, so now we've got a machine uh, for 700 euros. And building a computer is very, very simple. There are so many YouTube tutorials. Uh, build a PC quick guide. Uh, they have, I don't know, you can follow, there's so many, like 20 different, 100 different videos about how to put together a PC, updated monthly. Okay. It takes about a couple hours, I think, to put together a PC if you've never done it before. Easier to do it with a friend. All you need is a screwdriver and a static-free surface. You can always get a friend to help you build your computer. If you have one of those uh, gamer friends uh, that like to build their own PCs, they love building new PCs. They may just build one for you uh, just for the fun of it. All right, let's talk about applications. Should you use Adobe or not? When I say $300 editing PC, a lot of you guys are like, yeah, but then I have to pay like 150 bucks per year to Adobe for their creative suite. Adobe is all subscription these days. That's how they fought piracy. Can't pirate a 
program that gets updated twice a day. Uh, but Photoshop or Adobe is not the only game in town. Affinity Photo is another program I use and I really like it. It's an alternative. It's not free, uh, but it's a whole lot cheaper than Photoshop and it often goes on discount. It's not the same as Adobe Photoshop, uh, but if you quit Photoshop cold turkey, you'll find that you can do a lot of the basic stuff that you do in Photoshop with Affinity Photo. In terms of alternatives to Lightroom, you've got Darktable. It's a free raw uh, photo editing software. Now it's a bit complicated, a bit complex, uh, definitely more for technically minded people, although the interface has been getting a lot friendlier lately. Another free program is Raw Therapy. Okay, so you don't have to be locked into the Photoshop ecosystem. Although if you're doing it professionally, I would say pay for the Photoshop as a tax write-off. Okay, so how do you actually put a PC that also edits 4K video? And the issue with PC part picker is they often recommend their builds are oriented towards gamers and streamers. So usually they have these really expensive graphics cards in them. Now it helps to have a graphics card for video editing, don't get me wrong, especially if you're doing After Effects or that kind of work, but you don't need a top of the line gaming uh, beastly graphics card. Uh, and what we can do is we can just modify one of the existing builds uh, to make it appropriate for 4K editing. So again, we choose an AMD computer, one with a, here we go, magnificent AMD gaming or streaming build. We're going to customize it. Okay, so it already includes an eight core processor, which is great for video editing. This 3700X uh, is a really good one. 32 gigabytes of RAM, uh, which is handy. Okay, guys, honestly, this computer is kind of good to go uh, for video editing, except the graphics card is so ridiculously expensive. Okay, so we're gonna X this one out. We don't need it. Instead, we're going to add a, for video editing, you don't need a hardcore graphics card, you just need a decent one. So I would say we're gonna go for the 1660 Super. And in terms of graphics cards, I always go with Asus or Zotac or EVGA. So we got Asus, EVGA, Asus, EVGA, or Zotac. It's my favorite brands for graphics cards. Okay, just 13 to choose from. Uh, let's, and then we choose the cheapest one. Asus Tough Gaming. Add it. Okay, boom. So, used to be a $1,700 computer. We've added a reasonable graphics card for reasonable people and it has become a $1,200 computer. Okay, and we're paying, we're paying a lot of money for this case. Maybe we don't need this fancy case that looks like it's out of a sci-fi movie for 150 bucks. Uh, Meshify S2. Let's see if we can save some money on a case. Choose a new case. Oh, Meshify C. I have a case like this. It works just fine. I'm gonna add it. Boom, I've just saved you guys another 50 bucks. We're down to under $1,200. Okay guys, so that's roughly the process. Oh, the CPU cooler, look at this. They've added this insane cooler uh, to cool the system. Certainly not nothing wrong with this one. Uh, there's more money to be saved here. So if you need help or advice, you can ask us in the comment thread on this video, or you can go on Reddit. They have a community called Build a PC, uh, where they discuss how to build PCs and you can uh, ask these guys for help. They will definitely help you out. Finally, tip number 10, or you can get a Mac. You could just go to Apple dot com and buy their latest uh, concoction uh, macbook i guess you'd want a macbook pro 16 inch uh, for this kind of work okay, that's what i would personally go for and you would probably still have to edit uh, with proxy workflow uh, or you could get one of these beasts mac pros looks like they're still selling the cheese grater what's going on with that i think there's another mac pro coming soon uh, where, where was the imac pro that's the one i wanted to take a look at the iMac Pro, yeah. This is the one people will recommend to you guys online. It's always safe to recommend people an iMac Pro. It's $5,000. <laughs> it's $5,000. Yeah, you can edit 4K video on this uh, with no problems. Although, uh, it's kind of a tough pill to swallow. As always, guys, thanks for watching the video. I am not a professional computer person. I just know a couple things about PCs and a few things about photo editing. So if you need advice, or help putting together a photo editing PC, ask me in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you next week.